Well, uh, we can go now live back to Anne-Marie Tomczak, who's with uh, our three BBC uh, journalist colleagues uh, representing the UK, Russia and China. They've been taking uh, a part of the PISA test. Anne-Marie, how did they get on? Yes, Anita, they've been very busy here in the World's News when we put them to the test with a sample of some of the questions. Howard from the Chinese service, John Brain, news correspondent, and Oleg from the Russian service. Guys, how did you find the test? It's quite interesting. It's like a standard IQ test. And uh, some of the questions you really need to do turn your brains and actually otherwise you can't really answer it. And um, so you find it quite interesting. John, how do you describe it? Well, when I was given the papers, I came out with that sort of cold sweat which transported me back all those years ago to when I was actually at school. But um, a couple of them were quite logical and uh, just very straightforward common sense. But then there was one which uh, I just didn't have a clue. So I did exactly what I did when I was at school and just talked to the brighter kid and got him to answer it for me. So uh, that all. was uh, Howard, so a slight bit of cheating easy. perhaps. Yeah, but, uh, well, I've had a look at some of the questions and one of them that caught my eye, uh, there are a lot of bar charts and graphs and so on, so a lot of like analysis to break down. And one of them here was a multiple choice question. It was about Helen the cyclist. Helen has just got a new bike. It has a speedometer which sits on the handlebar. You can see a picture of Helen there on her bicycle. The speedometer can tell Helen the distance she travels and her average speed for a trip. And the question is, on one trip, Helen rode four kilometres in the first ten minutes and then two kilometres in the next five minutes. And it gives you a whole series of options as to what is the answer. Guys, did you get that one right? The answer was B. Helen's average speed was the same in the first 10 minutes and in the next five minutes. I somehow read it as five uh, kilometers for the first 10 minutes. Oh, excuses, excuses. <laughs> well, we have the scores for each of our contributors here. And uh, now that for the moment of truth, Howard right. and John in a tie with three points. And Oleg, Oleg hey, got four Oleg. points. Oleg. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How do you feel about that, Oleg? Uh, well, I, I, I too, I was looking for uh, for some sort of a, a trick there. Uh, for me, it seemed more uh, difficult to, for the first time. And then, I, no, it's just a simple calculation. So you calculate the average speed in one case and another. They just a very rational the explanation. Yeah. Well, you're all very, very clever. But like, let's talk a little bit more about uh, different approaches to education. Oleg, you rank the highest here, but actually Russia was ranked 34th in this league table. Why do you think that was? Uh, well, Russia is in constant turmoil. The education is always uh, in discussion. There's lots of scandals. There's lots of arguments. Russia has actually changed its system of testing the pupils from sort of old-fashioned one-on-one uh, -on -one essays uh, onto s tests. And there is now a unified state test. And uh, lots of teachers, lots of old-school teachers, lots of parents are very much against this. They think that simple tests are not the way of um, marking uh, or evaluating um, a, a child's performance while uh, authorities saying, you know, this is the way to go and it excludes corruption. Now, this being Russia, obviously corruption is always in the picture. Somehow the answers to those tests miraculously appear in the internet the morning before the test in a particular subject is being taken. So at least uh, in the corruption field, they still haven't figured out how to do it. But while well, at least this, um, th this test is now to stay. John, the notion of tests not being the only barometer to quantify how well uh, children are doing or students are doing in education, that's something that's come up a lot today because of the UK's position on the new table. Yes, of course, and very disappointing for the UK to actually not only be holding its position but apparently slipping down the, the pecking order of uh, world countries. And there is a huge debate, of course, going on in Britain about uh, education, as there has been for many years now, successive governments have said how important education is, but have not been able to agree on the way forward. So each time there's a change of government, the and sometimes even a change of education secretary, there does seem to be tend to be a change of policy. And now we've got uh, Michael Gove, uh, the education secretary, is committed to raising standards. His concept is to change the national curriculum, fewer subjects for pupils to school, but more, more rigour generally. Uh, Oleg was talking about uh, the corruption in the exam system. Well, of course, corruption's not really an issue here. But uh, what Michael Gove uh, wants is that more emphasis on the actual exams, less on coursework. Mm. And the, the other uh, factor in all this is, is the social mobility aspect of it, that there is a problem or a, a perceived problem that uh, if you're a child of articulate middle class parents, then it's much easier to get ahead. 
uh, than, than it is for other parts of society and this is something that's obviously always in the background of this mm. debate about raising educational standards. Howard, John mentioned how uh, commentators in the UK are talking about more bringing more rigour into mm -hmm. the education system here in the UK. Rigour is something that China is no stranger to when it comes to education. Exactly, not only China, the entire sort of East Asia region, if you look at the top four, are all from that region. All sort of the sphere of Confucian thinking, uh, school uh, study, education being the core of, of uh, the, the, the almost faith, almost religion uh, in, in that area. Um, they have solid basic uh, education. But then you, from the, uh, the, the, the massive uh, number of people coming to the UK for higher education, you can also tell that you know, the, the, ba the f higher uh, rigor in, in sort of a fundamental studies mm -hmm. may not really lead to uh, better higher education. So that, that there is that balance there as well. Mm, well. It's becoming more and more competitive every year with growing populations and the increasing demand for schools. So um, that's it. That's all that we have time for from the World's Newsroom this evening. But thanks so much for participating in our test. And I think I'm going to go and try it now. Anne-Marie, thank you very much. Yes, and uh, well done to our three colleagues who uh, uh, took that test. Apologies uh, for some breakup on the sound there on Anne-Marie's microphone.